Hello, my name is Dr. Cubbin. I'm one of your sixth grade science teachers. I also run the Science Olympiad program for Bay Academy. I just want to introduce myself. I'll be speaking to uh, some of you who have me and uh, others who I'll see you in the hall. Uh, I do want to touch base and let you know a little bit about what you're going to be learning this year. I know that coming out of elementary school into uh, middle school science is always a big leap for many students because often you've had maybe one class a week with minimal um, introduction to a lot of what you're going to be doing in middle school. So uh, what we like to do is we like to make sure that you are prepared as possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just give you an idea of what you're going to be learning and uh, some of the subjects we're going to be going over. I um, have my little cheat sheet right here. I want to make sure I get them in order. Uh, first one is we're going to be talking about the scientific method. I'm sure you're all experts in the scientific method coming out of elementary school and uh, maybe not. So by the time you leave sixth grade, you will be an expert in the scientific method because the scientific method is how the world runs. It's how we think. It's what we do. It's how we uh, approach any type of a problem looking for a solution. You know, if you're um, can't find your shoes, you can't find your shoes, you're headed off to school, you know. So you're going to go through the steps of the scientific method, although you may not realize it. So you're going to be making an observation, which is first, you have no shoes. Uh, you're going to uh, come up with some type of a question or a problem. Where are my shoes? Uh, then from that, you're going to develop a hypothesis. Um, I think if I can remember where my shoes last were, uh, I will be able to locate them before I go to school. And from that, you are going to um, come up with some type of a plan to go about locating your shoes. So you're going to maybe come to a list of places that you left your shoes. And you're going to go through that list. You're going to run an experiment. You're going to go to each one of those spots and see if you can find your shoes. And uh, if you get to the end and you collect all your data, and you still have no shoes, then your conclusion does not support your hypothesis. So what do you do? You have to go back and make another hypothesis. You might have to uh, think of people who might have borrowed your shoes. Maybe think of uh, something else that might have happened to your shoes that is testable. Then you're going to create another hypothesis and you're going to run another experiment. And eventually you're going to come up with a solution for this. So scientific method, we all use it. It's a routine in everybody's day. And by the end of the sixth grade, you're going to realize how you use it more than you really think you do. So we're going to spend a couple of weeks on scientific method at the beginning of the year. <clears throat> we're going to be watching videos. We're going to be doing hands-on experiments. So I'm going to show you uh, one of them uh, shortly. Some of the topics. I think that was my cat. Oh, that's him sleeping over there. Yeah, he's, he's on the couch. Maybe it's the other cat. Uh, first subject. Electricity and magnetism. Uh, we're going to be talking about circuits, we're going to be talking about voltage, how current runs, uh, certain resistors, how they are able to resist the flow of electricity. Uh, it's very, very exciting. Magnetism, north-south pole, how uh, we apply these to our daily lives, uh, not just for compasses, but for other devices. All motors use magnets. Uh, engineering, energy, and transformation. So energy, uh, different types of uh, energy, solar energy, thermal energy, kinetic energy, um, and um, engineering. So we're going to be building things. Uh, you may be, I may be having you to build something at home. And whenever you are doing a lab at home, and you will be doing labs at home, keep in mind that Labs are not necessarily meant to be an expensive proposition. They can be done with the simplest of objects. I could take two pencils and come up with a handful of labs that you could. OK, maybe I'd need the rubber band too. handful of labs that you could make at home and you could do experiments with. Keep in mind that, you know, uh, when, when you're in sixth grade, it's it's really about discovery. It's about realizing things that you knew, but you kind of might have taken for granted. And you really didn't evaluate them completely until now. Uh, transformations, how uh, one type of energy is transformed to another. So if you have, um, if you turn on your stove and you're heating some water and you're going to make some tea, 
So you take some chemical energy, which is the gas coming out of the stove, and you're going to ignite it. That's going to become light energy. You're going to cause a light, and you're going to have some type of heat given off, you thermal energy. And then you're going to have some type of transfer of energy. So you're going to have uh, some type of uh, uh, radiation from the stove to the tea kettle. Uh, say if you grab the tea kettle without putting on an oven mitt, you might have some type of uh, conduction uh, take place where it's contact to contact, atom to atom, particle to particle. So we're going to be talking about transformations. Ecosystems, really very exciting ecosystems. Had a lot of good lesson plans for ecosystems. Um, investigating weather and climate. Weather and climate is always a very interesting topic because it's something we have to deal with every day. Something where sometimes we're prepared for it, sometimes we're not prepared for it. Uh, how many times do we go out and we think it's going to be a good day and it ends up raining and we don't have an umbrella? Well, we bring the umbrella and we don't need it because we didn't look at the forecast. We, we didn't notice that we were in a low pressure system and a high pressure system was coming in. It was going to clear out the skies. So you're going to be learning about high and low pressure systems and how they affect our weather. Uh, human impact on the environment uh, can be uh, both positive or devastating. And... Uh, uh, the Valdez oil spill or uh, other uh, incidents that uh, maybe uh, were not so good. But then you have other um, uh, human impacts, say uh, Hoover Dam, where we're able to harness uh, hydroelectric power uh, for uh, use for everyone. See how much more time I have? Ooh, I got plenty of time left here. Uh, this is kind of very informal. So, you know, I know this is an odd year we're starting out with. Um, it's odd because I may not even be your science teacher, but I wanted you to see this because uh, I just want to make sure you uh, knew what you're getting into uh, for sixth grade science. Uh, it's an unusual year because many of you are going to be home, but it doesn't mean that you are going to be getting less than what people get in school. In fact, you're going to have more leeway to move around at home than other people may. And I'm going to show you in a second just how you can do that. Um, and um, da, 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 uh, human impact on Earth's uh, systems. Okay, so those are the topics we're going to be covering. And we're going to be giving some more and some a little less time. So I'm going to talk to you about experiments. So I'm sure you're familiar with uh, some of the experiments that have taken place. And uh, I want people to know that experiments are not meant to turn out the way we want them. You know, sometimes when students do experiments in my room, they say, oh, you know, my hypothesis was wrong. Look, if your hypothesis was testable, if your hypothesis was testable, it can neither be right nor wrong. So if your hypothesis says that uh, if I give um, the my house plants um, one cup of water, two cup of water, and three cups of water for three plants, then the plant that gets the most water is going to grow the most. And so you may find out that um, that was not true. Maybe the second plant grew the most in your conclusion once you collected your data. Does that mean that your hypothesis was wrong? Absolutely not, as long as your hypothesis is testable. So were you able to test it? Yeah, you had three plants. Were you able to uh, give them different amounts of water? Sure. Were you allowed to uh, or capable of allowing for those three levels of your independent variable, what you're testing? So you're testing to see uh, how much water your plant needs for maximum growth. And what your dependent variable would be is how high or how good the plant grows. You may not even look to see how high the plant grows. You may look to see um, how many buds or how many flowers it sprouts as a result of having more or less water. So there's, you know, there's uh, simple plant experiments, even though they are relatively simple, doesn't mean they're bad or good. As long as, look, when you're in a science class, as long as your hypothesis is testable, then you're good. Everything's okay. So I am going to uh, show you an experiment, not really an experiment, I'm going to give you an idea of what we're going to do. So I have a meter stick here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this all that well, but I also have, I also have, I'm going to say, I'm going to take these three rubber balls here. Now, if you can see them, they're 
relatively identical except for color or swirl markings on, but they're, they're pretty much the same balls. So you might say if uh, Jimmy next to you gets one and you get a different one, you're like, if Jimmy gets the green and you get the purple, you're like, yeah, Jimmy got the green. That one, green is good. Green's going to go. Uh, so you might say, well, you know what? Let's do an experiment to see if Jimmy really does have um, the ball that's going to be doing whatever it does best for the class. So we might say, we might look, be looking to test for bouncing, how much something can bounce. And so um, in a case like this, what we'd want to do is we'd want to have three levels of our independent variable. So we're going to have uh, three balls. And what we're going to be doing is we are going to be doing trials for each one of these balls. So we're going to take our balls and then we're going to have to decide first uh, what our height is that we're going to be uh, dropping these from to see how high they bounce. So we could do a couple of different things with this experiment. So we could take <clears throat> one ball and drop it from three different heights. Let's see right here. 30 centimeters. Okay, there goes the green ball. So the green ball is working pretty well. Or we could take it and from 20, 30, or 40 centimeters, just take one ball and see how high that bounces. Or we could take the three balls and drop them all from the same height, depending on what we're looking to find out. And this is called, uh, this, this method of experimentation is called experimental design. So uh, many of you are coming to Bay Academy with the intent on, if you're science people, uh, of uh, joining in the Science Olympiad. Uh, so you know Bay Academy is number one in New York City we get to brag about that a lot because not only are we number one, but last year we were we came in first and second place in uh, New York City for Science Olympiad. Uh, the year before last, we came in third place at New York State. So out of all the middle schools in New York State, uh, Bay Academy was the third best for Science Olympiad team. So we have a lot of a lot of smart kids coming to our school, and we have a lot of good things going for us. Our science teachers are great. All our teachers are great, but our science teachers are especially great. Do you know why? Because they're science teachers, and science is great. In fact, you may not know this, but there's only really three important classes when you go to middle school, and uh, I'm going to tell you what they are right now. You may, you may know them already. The first most important class that you're ever going to take is science, number one important class. Second most important class? Yeah, that would be science. Third most important class would be, that's right, that would be science. So those are the three most important classes you'll ever take. And I know the math department and the science department, we may disagree on this, but uh, our departments are great. And either one that your talent is in, no matter what your talent is, you're going to do great. Uh, so what we could do is we can either test our individual bouncing balls here, or we could, I have nine balls here, and we could do, dozens and dozens of tests. So I have the rubber ball, I have the golf ball, and I have the tennis ball. And so we're looking at these three, we want to say which ball bounces the highest. And so you might say, oh, the rubber ball. And uh, you're, because uh, of this experiment, you might say, well, I've played with these before and I know they bounce very high. And somebody else might say, oh, I played with the tennis. I played tennis before and I know that bounces high. Somebody else might say, I you know, play golf and I know that bounces high. So what we can do is we can either test these individually or we can drop them all from the same height individually though and record this data. So when we do our experiments, we're gonna go through the scientific method. We're gonna come, come up with our observation three balls, and we see that our observation is that we drop them on the table and uh, they seem to be bouncing differently. Our problem or question is going to be, uh, if independently dropped, which one bounces the highest? And then we're going to come up with our hypothesis. Um, if uh, three balls, tennis ball, golf ball, and uh, rubber ball are dropped from the same height, then, because our, our, our scientific method is always in if, then, or because, then the rubber ball is going to uh, bounce the highest because it feels the densest. I don't know. You, you can say for whatever reason. Uh, as long as it's testable, as long as it's testable, as long as it's observable. You know, so can you test and observe something? Sure, 
And we're going to talk about observations and inferences and all that too. Um, so I just want to give you an idea. So if we did a test like this, if we did a lab like this,